notes for sensation, and today we're talking about I believe, vision and audition. That's what number page 10 is about, right? Um, yeah. Yes. Vision and audition. And I don't mean audition like trying out for play, I mean like audition as in sounds, sound waves, and interpreting and perceiving them. All right, so uh, the first unit is on here. This week's about the actual sensation. Let, let's actually get a reminder on the difference between these two terms. <laughs> Sensation and perception. Uh, can anybody tell me the difference between those two? Distinguish them. Because this is something that confuses people. I mentioned this like the first couple days, but I'm going to see if you guys remember. Or not. Uh, so sensation is like information that you pick up um, regarding your senses. So like things that you see, things that you hear. And then mm -hmm. perception is like how you interpret that information. So it's like if you see it as like bad or if you see it as good or if you see it as, like if you pick up the smell, that's your sensation. Mm -hmm. But then your perception of that would be like, well, like if I think it smells good, that's my perception of that smell. But yeah. if I think it smells bad, then that's your perception. Yeah, exactly. So you're, you're, you're kind of like giving the information meaning, essentially. Whether it's good or bad, or enjoyable or not enjoyable, or uh, is it a pattern, or is this coincidence? Is, you know, that's how you're perceiving it. Uh, uh, the, someone's actions, technically that's sensory information. You're seeing them move, or hearing them talk, or whatever, uh, but you can interpret them differently. Like I said, I can look and see somebody following me, right? So the sensory information is visual, I'm seeing them follow me, but could I interpret that, that information differently? How could I interpret it? Okay, they're following me because they want to kill me. Okay, that's another way I can interpret it. What? The government sent them. The government sent them to come capture me. Yep. How else could I? These are delusional, but yes, I could. Uh, I could perceive them these ways. What else? What's a more realistic perception? They're just going the same way. Yeah, they are. They're the same class, going the same direction, whatever reason. Okay, cool. So in that instance, um, which was which? I look back, see the guy, think he's following me because he wants to kill me. Play me through that. What's what in here? In that scenario that I just gave you. So seeing the guy itself like walking behind you, that would be your sensation because you're seeing him. And yep. then your perception of him wanting to kill you or whatever is how you're perceiving it. Yeah, exactly. So right, giving it the meaning with the perception and then the, the just the information coming to me, that's this is the picture, that's the interpretation of the picture, right? Uh, if you want to think of it like statistics, I don't know if this helps. This is like descriptive statistics, and this is like inferential statistics. Descriptive, you're like, that didn't help me at all. Uh, description is, uh, descriptive is like, there's the numbers, right? Inferential is what? Describing the numbers? Come on, describing them how? There's a 10, there's a five, and yeah, like the numbers. Statistics. What do you mean giving them meaning? Uh, so it's like, if you're looking at a graph, those the numbers on the graph are like the data, essentially, and then the, so if you're looking at a graph of like, how many terms you remember, like with like two hours of sleep, then the numbers would be the sensation, but then, uh, your perception of that, or like the inferential um, statistics would be that, oh, when they had two hours of sleep, then they remember it's like 20 terms, so, or like. Yeah, yeah, they did worse, right. So that's the, the conclusion you're coming to, right? You're giving that data meaning. So if I look at test scores uh, and sleep hours, like that's just the data, here's all the numbers, right? We can all see the numbers that we can see, right? That's kind of like the sensory information. And then when you think about it, they're like, oh, look, these scores were better when they slept more. That's perceiving and giving it meaning, right? So. This is just the information. This is giving the information meaning. Roger? All right. We can all see, though, that as humans, uh, there are some uh, abstractions like, you know, uh, and we'll talk about them, like uh, blindness or color blindness and, and sensory neural uh, hearing loss and things like that. So you can have errors in the sensory reception, but assuming that you have normally functional eyes and ears and all that, and you can see in here um, um, normally, um, all the information we're getting is the same but we can perceive it all endlessly. There's an infinite num number of ways we can perceive information, all right? It doesn't have to be good or bad, you know? It can, it, it can range on lots of different things. So like I said, what are their intentions? Uh, are those intentions good or bad? And to me, something that is good is different than is something good for you. So there's a ridiculous amount of, uh, an infinite amount actually, of different perceptions for all of this uh, sensation, sensory information we're getting. So this unit, notebook 10 and 11, uh, it's about the five senses and just purely about how you get the information. So how your body takes in the information and gets it to your brain. And then next week, I think, is when we focus on what your brain does with that info. Does that make sense? All right. So <clears throat> that's what we're talking about. So we'll do uh, vision first. Vision. 
Okay, so vision, obviously, it uh, takes place um, uh, through the eyes, and you are seeing, actually, uh, waves of light. That's what you're seeing when you, when you see people in color. Uh, assuming, again, you're not colorblind or actually uh, blind completely. So, when we see, uh, it's really weird when you actually think about what's going on. And we'll get more into the details here, but what we're seeing might not be what's actually there. Aside from the fact that you could hallucinate and see something that's not there, but we actually see differently than other animals that also have eyes because they see uh, in different ways and they interpret that information uh, differently. I realize that's kind of perceptual, but even the sensory part's different. Um, so far as we know, we have the best vision of all animals except for birds of prey, like, you know, like hawks and things like that. Um, they have ridiculous vision. Uh, they can like fly up, you know, 100 feet in the air and, and see a rodent in the grass, which we could never do, uh, and they just zoom in and get it. Uh, or they can see ultraviolet light, so they can like see, you know, uh, little like uh, uh, trails of like urine, so they know, oh, the rat's always going here, so I'm just gonna wait here until the rat comes here again. There's the rat, and then go get it, right? We can't do that, uh, but for the most part, as far as our uh, detail and perception of color, uh, or our ability to see color, not even perceiving it, to even receive the information, uh, we are just below uh, birds of prey for the most part. Um, but again, uh, our brains are interpreting it, so what we're seeing might not actually be what it really actually looks like. And, and we'll get into that in, in a little bit, because we'll talk about how they actually function. So, vision comes in through the eye, obviously, both eyes. Why do I need two, by the way? That's more of a perception thing, but we have two eyes. And in fact, people that uh, have you know injuries or whatever, and they go down to one eye, they're technically at a disadvantage, besides the fact that they have one less eye alone. Why do they have a disadvantage? It's like, yeah, okay, they can see less. Like if I close one eye, I'm losing this information. But aside from the fact that I lose this half the information, let's just focus on this information here that I'm seeing through my left eye. Why am I at a disadvantage if I have one eye as opposed to two? Why do we all have two? Why did evolution favor the two-eyed as opposed to the one-eyed? Because like, if you have two eyes, you can see more of your surroundings than that's true. I, yeah, I said that, and you, you're totally right. That is completely accurate. Like, if I can't see this over here, and there's a lion, and I'm just like, do 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 do, and then the lion comes up, I'm dead, right? But assume I'm talking only about what I can see with with this half, or like maybe my eyes like right in the front, and it's big, so I can see a wider area. Why didn't I develop that? Why did evolution favor the two eyes? Um, wouldn't it be more like a balancing thing because you're more focusing like with so one certain half compared to the other, or like one side of your body compared mm. to the other? Are you talking about favoring one? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say, I'm not aware of us favoring a certain eye more than others. I know for me, for example, my left eye technically does see a little better, uh, but I don't notice it when both my eyes are working because my brain, the perception part, blends the information together. All right, uh, so here I'll, I'll tell you, since we're not quite onto it. This is definitely more of a perception thing, but I wanted to bring this up when we're talking about our eyes before we get into the details. Um, if you close one eye, you actually have worse um, uh, depth perception. And again, I realize this is a perception thing, but if I were to, example, for example, put this right here, and I turn around. If I use both of my eyes, I might miss guys, but I'm much more likely to just be able to do a whoop and then put my finger right on the tip of it, right? Most of us are like, duh, I can do that too. All right, what if I close one eye? Am I just as likely to do that? You're gonna miss it. I might, I might hit it, but I'm more likely to miss it. So, well, let's see if I do. I'm gonna try my hardest. The right eye, the right eye. Right eye, closed. Spin around. Oh, I, well, at least I touched it. But it was, it was definitely not on center. I like just barely nipped the edge and it fell over. I was off. Why was I off? I didn't have the depth. I needed two. Uh, I needed the, uh, the sensory info from two sources to gauge exactly where it was. If you just have one, I kind of see 2D, and I can't tell how far away it is. If I have the two perspectives, I get two different angles, and it can tell my brain. This is again, this is perception. I'm getting a little ahead, but that's why um, I can actually tell precisely where it is in 3D space as opposed to 2D. But again, we're focusing on the actual sensation portion. Uh, I probably should have saved that for tomorrow, but whatever. I'll bring it up again tomorrow. So, uh, I, so we gotta talk about the structure and then what it does exactly. All right, so here's the parts roughly. I'll kind of draw it-ish. It's not gonna be exact. That's good enough. All 
All right, so I, first, it's got to take in the actual uh, light information. And by the way, cameras, why they don't function the same way as eyes do, uh, this portion sort of does. This is kind of what your eye uses to focus on. All right, so you know when you have, when you have a camera, someone's taking a picture, not a camera phone because you can't quite see it because it's too small. Like an actual camera, if you ever see somebody like point it in a new direction, what's the lens do? What do you see happening? Oh yeah, or are they physically twisting? Like what are they doing? Yeah, they're focusing. They're they're widening. They're they're changing the uh, uh, the amount of light that, that's coming in, focusing it to a to a point, uh, a distance. Your eye kind of does that too. So um, what it does that through is the uh, uh, um, cornea, which is the outside, um, and this little pupil here is actually where the light's coming through. People, that dot, that black dot in your eye that can get bigger or smaller. Because again, if I were to be like in a dark room and then someone turns on the light. What happens to my uh, pupil? It gets, bigger. it gets bigger. That would really hurt. Oh, it gets smaller. It gets smaller. Yeah, it'll start big because my 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 eye. If I'm in a dark room, there's not much light bouncing around in it because I mean that's why it's dark. So your brain and your eye react by opening up your pupil to take in as much light as possible. It's like oh my god, I can't see anything. We need more light. So like it like open. It's like almost like a garage door. It opens the garage door as much as it can to bring in as much light. All right. But then when like, you get a whole bunch of light, it uh, kind of overwhelms you because it's too much information to perceive. It actually hurts your eye. Uh, and your body responds. Well, first you'll probably respond by closing your eyelids. You're like, ah. But even if you couldn't, let's say you like sewed your eyelids up. That sounds like a saw thing, but um, anyways. So they, they, you, you would, uh, if you didn't close your eyes, you would notice that your pupil goes, it, like shocks itself down because it, it's, there's so much information coming in, so much light coming in, it's too much to handle, so it actually uh, shrinks up to reduce the amount. So this is actually widens or narrows depending on how much light's coming in. So again, if it's dark, it's like open to the max, I'm trying to get as much light as I can. If I turn the lights on, there's a lot of light, like right now, the pupils are gonna generally be quite small. Okay, so that's where the light comes in, and it's now uh, gonna be condensed or reduced uh, which is kind of like a uh, magnifying glass, or, or just any sort of glass. Uh, this is my lens, right? Just like actual glasses function. They're taking the light and focusing it to a point, uh, in, in the case of glasses. So light comes through, cornea and the pupil, and then it's coming from all different directions, by the way. And then my lens uh, is gonna take that light, focus it, and it's going to send it to the back of my eye, where I have a lot of receptors, which we'll talk about, uh, and that wall of receptors is called the um, retina. All right. Why do I have the lens? Anybody know that one? Like, why can't why can't I just have the pupil and no lens, and the light just goes? Whoa. Because it doesn't focus the light. Yeah, it can't focus it. But like, why do I need to focus it? You're like, ah. So you're right, I need to focus it. I should pay for that, because it's the correct answer. What you got? Um, I don't know what to say. But does it like, does the lens direct it to the retina? It's already gonna hit the retinal wall, the retina. Uh. It's already gonna hit back there. Why do I need to focus it to a certain area? Because you have to. Because you have to. Would your vision just be super blurry then? If you yeah, it would. It'd be super blurry uh, and unfocused, right. So, um, well, this is, again, a perception thing, but if you guys don't know this, now you do. If I'm looking, like I'm looking at you right now, if I'm looking at you, I can still kind of see you guys, but is it a clear, crystal clear picture? Can I see your facial expressions and things like that? No, you could be scowling at me and I'd have no idea. I would know if you did, because I'm looking right at you, right? But if, uh, if, if Vanessa and Onward over there scowls, I, I, I couldn't tell. I can see that you're putting your hand up and making a peace sign. I hope that's two fingers anyway. But yeah, no. see, like, <laughs> so I can see that you're moving, but the detail's just gone. Like, you're, you're, you may as well be a blur, all right? And it's really weird for you because I'm just looking at you and, and talking about all this. But I'll look behind you. I'll look, at, I'll look at the map. There you go. So, like, I'm looking at this map. I can see all the detail on the map, all the little islands. I can't read the words because it's too far away. Um, and the further you people get from my line of vision on that map, the, the less detail I have about you. All right, I can see if you move and things like that, but as far as if you're smiling or frowning or, or whatever, I have no idea. 
Okay, but if I look at you, then I can tell. So why is that? <coughs> How come I have to look at you to know what's on your face as far as expressions go? Yeah. Focusing the light. It's like there we go, yeah. And uh, do you know where it's focusing it? On whatever you're looking at, and then it'll focus it until you actually Yes, but there's a specific part of it that I was looking for. You're totally right. Good enough for me to give you the answer. Uh, the reason why I can uh, see the detail on you is that uh, my light is being focused to a point, and that point has the uh, receptors that uh, have my highest detail um, um, receiving capability. All right, like color and things like that. So this area is not actually, like if I looked at a retinal wall, I wouldn't actually like see a circle here. Uh, but this area that the light is focused <coughs> to is uh, known as the um, phobia. Yes, phobia. Yeah, I'm not mixing my terms up. Yeah, the phobia. That area is where you're going to see the majority of your detail. All right, so if I, uh, this is why you would use glasses or corrective surgery. Let's say, because this happens to all of us over time, even if you have great vision initially, when you get old enough, it won't be. The uh, shape of your eye, whether it's the cornea or the lens itself, it changes shape over time. Why is that potentially a bad thing for me? And it's not because it looks weird. So if I want to see clearly my, uh, Cornea, pupil, and lens have to focus the light here, right? That's where my detail that receiving is, okay? So if over time these shapes change, what's wrong? What's going on here? It's like if your eye changes shape, it'll like not send the light directly to the phobia. Mm -hmm. So everything's kind of like starts to get blurry. Exactly. It'll actually make your vision blurrier. This is why you need glasses or LASIK surgery. Um, and, and those of you that have gone from not having glasses but needing them to wearing glasses, it goes from like, oh my gosh, life is like HD now. I can see all of the letters everywhere and all these things. Whereas um, before the glasses, it was too blurry. You'd have to be like really close or some people are actually farsighted. They can't see the close things. They can only see far things. That's because one of these mechanisms is uh, misshapen or malformed in some way. Whether it was born that way or it became that way over time. Uh, Something's a little off. So the light is not being focused here to this area. It's being uh, either focused off a little bit or it's, it's scattered, you know, however it goes. All right, and when you wear glasses or have corrective surgery, all they're doing is either, in the case of surgery, reshaping uh, the, uh, the shape of your eye so it's correct, it hits that part, or the glasses do that for you. They focus the light uh, correctly towards your phobia. So that's why you can see so clearly uh, if you have the surgery or wear glasses, assuming, of course, you had a, a problem. And again, even if your vision's fine right now, it will get worse as you age because these will change shape as you age. Makes sense? Also, you gross things called cataracts on your eyes and stuff like that, so it actually technically blurs it, but anyways. <clears throat> so we're with me so far on how light comes in and has to be directed to a certain area. You got that part, right? Okay, cool. So, and you do need to know the names of these, roughly speaking, so at least know these. By the way, I should mention there's way more detail in the eye as far as parts, but we're going like minimal, just what you need to know for the actual AP test, because like you don't need to know the rest of the stuff if you want to. You go right ahead. Uh, all we care about is how the light gets here and why it needs to get here. All right, so we know how the light gets here and how you can correct it potentially. How can I correct it potentially? Let's say I have blurry vision. How can I correct it? Glasses. Okay, glasses. Any glasses? No. Yeah, why do I have to get specific glasses? Like, why if I, like I'm wearing glasses now, why if I grabbed Haley's glasses, the yeah. odds that I could see as well as these ones are relatively low, unless we happen to have the same glasses. Why is that? Because the eye would, um, well, our eyes would need a certain amount of light to go out of Yes, how do you say it? You're on the right track. Because not everybody's eyes are damaged in a certain way. So that would mean that more light would have to go through certain people's glasses more than other people's glasses. Yeah, okay, so we have different dimensions, first of all. So first of all, um, our eyes could be actually bigger or smaller than they likely are. Like mine are either a little bigger or a little smaller than hers, almost certainly. 
right? So that is going to change the distance between the two, and therefore I'm going to have to change the uh, adjustment of the lens. Or, like you mentioned, the surface here of our actual eye, which is more likely, is going to be slightly different shape or whatever. So what bends the light correctly for my eye, it might send hers, like for me, it goes boom right to it. But uh, if she put on my glasses, it might, you know, send it over here on her eyes because her eye is a different distance or has a different shape to it. So that's why you have to go through and like custom, get custom lenses essentially, because your eyes have different uh, problems and distances. All right, so that's what they do. All right, I'll give you a, well done. Get you paid for that one. All right. Okay, um, so let's zoom in on this then. Uh, this is the general anatomy of the eye. Uh, and let's zoom in here on what's happening on this retina and in this fovea. Again, I have to say this one more time. <clears throat> if you looked at the fovea, so far as I know, you wouldn't be able to like see a difference. It would just look like all retinal wall, but the composition of receptors here is different, which is why it gets its own name, right? And if you don't focus the light there, you can't see in detail or well. <clears throat> so if we zoom in, we would see several um, different types of cells. So in the very back, I'm gonna draw these kind of like bricks because they're called rods, and that looks more like a rod. And there are also cones. They don't necessarily look like this, but I'm doing it so you can get the visual, all right? Cones, rods. One of these sees my shading and grayscale, and the other sees my uh, detail and color. Which one is which? Which one sees my detail and color? These ones are dominant in the fovea. Guessing between rods or cones. It's a 50-50. If you're wrong, it's okay. Rods. Rods, see the color and the detail? Yeah. Sorry, you guessed wrong. It was, uh, it was cones. And hey, maybe it helps out, but cones, color, they both start with a C. Um, yes, your cones see your high detail and your color, and the rods are more responsible for um, your uh, grayscale, so like kind of like dimness, uh, and uh, um, the, the less detailed but still important portions. All right, so if you know that, cones see the detail of the color, fovea, or sorry, not fovea, uh, rods see the um, uh, uh, grayscale and peripheral vision. Where do you think I would find the highest density of cones? Meaning, the cones in this area either outnumber or are higher in proportion to the rods. So like if I looked at an area, I would see, wow, there's a lot of cones there, not many, many rods. Where do you think that would be on my retinal wall where I would see more cones than I would in other parts of it? In the, um, fovea? Why? Because that's where the light is being like, hit directly. Yeah, that's the part that um, I have to hit with my uh, uh, lens because if I don't, I'm not going to get the uh, uh, information I need. That's why I would see things blurry uh, as opposed to detail. So the fovea... I have a, 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 the highest density. Do we know what density is? If I say that word, do we know what that means? Yes. Okay. Somebody tell me what density is. That didn't say yes. Fine, I'll take a yes. What's density? Density is like there's a lot of compact cones in that area. Yeah, compacted, exactly. Density is like how many, it depends on what you're talking about, in this case cones, how many cones there are in a certain area. So if I take a, a square inch, and there's 100,000 cones in it, as opposed to a square inch with 10,000 cones in it, which one is more dense? Who thinks the 100,000 is more dense? Okay, who thinks the 10,000 is more dense? Only no one brave enough to, to wear the hand for that one. Uh, you're correct, that one is more dense because there's more compacted in that one area. So here, I'm going to see way more uh, cones than I am in the rest of the retina. So the further away I go this way, what am I going to see less of? Cones. Cones and more what? Rods. Rods, yeah. So as I drift away from the fovea, I see uh, more rods and less cones. But the closer I get to the fovea and in the fovea, I'm going to see a lot more cones and uh, less rods, at least in density. At least in density. You actually have way more rods than cones. I think it's like 20 times more or something like that. I want to say, roughly speaking, you have about 120 million rods and then like 6 million cones or something like that. Um, 
But when you get at the Povia, you see way more cones there than anywhere else. Okay. Um, why do I need rods? There's a reason why we have them. People that didn't have rods died, and here we are. Why do we need so many rods? Well, you need it for information. Why? Even if you can't see it in detail, like if something's like about to approach you and it's like potentially dangerous and you need to be able to do Yeah, exactly. I need my peripheral vision uh, to survive, certainly. Like, <laughs> driving would be, it's already dangerous, but it'd be substantially more dangerous if I couldn't see what I wasn't directly looking at, right? If I'm just driving, all I can see is the lane I'm in, I don't know anything about what's on the side of me, that's extremely dangerous, right? I wouldn't know if there's a car is coming across or a person or, or any sort of obstacle uh, or even a, a turn coming up. So I, I wouldn't know any of that information. So the reason why we need rods and have them is these are our less detailed but still very important information on the periphery or the sides, all right? If I don't see this, I'm in imminent danger whether I'm driving or not. It could be a, a, a um, if I'm playing baseball and I can't see, and I'm looking over here, and a baseball starts coming over this way, uh, do I see it? No. In my peripheral vision, do I see it? If it's behind me, I won't. Do I see it? Is it? Do I see it coming towards me? I do. Do I see the detail? Like, do I know what color it is, things like that? No. But what do I know? It's, it's there, and it's, what's, what's it doing? It's coming towards me. It's coming towards me, right. So I need that, that, that information uh, to keep me safe, obviously to see potential predators or things falling or you talk about driving, other obstacles or turns on the road. Uh, I have to see them, but I don't need the detail. I just need to know they are there. And my brain, by the way, automatically focuses on things that I find threatening. So for example, if I am talking to you and there is a baseball coming, am I just gonna be like, see the baseball coming, am I just gonna step aside and keep talking to you? What's my brain automatically gonna do? It's going to look at that, right? Because it's like, well, what is this? And then it's going to uh, avoid it. So your, your attention automatically turns to whatever you find threatening. So these are uh, very important because, and I realize the threatening portion is actually perception, but picking up the information at all is critical because, again, if you can't see that coming at you, then you can't get out of the way and you're dead or there's a predator or whatever it might be uh, going back evolutionarily. So, yeah, we definitely need both, and the rods uh, are largely responsible for that undetailed peripheral vision and, and also shading. And then the uh, uh, cones are for that high detail and color. That's super important as well, because that allows us as humans to do things that are really um, oriented around fine uh, motor skills or finding things in the grass or fruits and things like that. That's why we had an advantage. We were the animals that go through and find things or see predators before they got there and, and things like see threats on the ground. So we could avoid danger and, and maximize um, utilizing things that are good, like fruits or whatever. Uh, and then, of course, we're also able to focus on tiny things so we can make machines and tools uh, that have helped us survive, too. So that's why humans have these, and that's helped us uh, continue our species. Okay. So do we understand what cones and rods do? All right. Uh, the other cells I'm going to talk about aren't nearly as important, but you still have to know them because they could give you anatomical pictures, and you have to identify what things are. Um, so. These are all connected to the next layer of cells in different combinations, but nonetheless connected uh, to cells called bipolar cells. And it doesn't mean they're manic depressive, it just means that they are taking in information from, from both ends in this case. So bipolar cells. And that's important because they connect to the ones that take it to your actual brain for perception, right? Deeming it as a threat or not, or a good thing, or something I could ignore, whatever it might be. Uh, these are your ganglion cells. And those are what relay it uh, through your optic nerve to your brain. And uh, depending, I'm not exactly sure how much detail you have to know about it going to the brain, but just know this. When I say the brain, you guys already know that your brain is not one thing. It's just actually a network of different parts. Uh, the part it goes through is the thalamus. That pretty much takes in 98% of all sensory information, whether it's vision, audition, or feel, or whatever it might be. It takes in almost all that info. So the optic nerve goes to that thalamus, and then your thalamus is the one that kind of directs it to where it's supposed to go. Like, oh, it's visual information. Go on to the occipital lobe. Or, oh, it's uh, auditory information. Go on to the temporal lobe, or whatever it might be. All right, so then that takes it to the, uh, in this case, the occipital lobe, uh, or wherever else other lobes uh, deal with that visual information. All right, so it's kind of like the, um, 
I'm oversimplifying it. For cert I'm certainly oversimplifying. But it's kind of like a, someone who's directing traffic, the thalamus, if you can think of it like that. Again, that's not its only function, and I'm oversimplifying it, but it, it kind of plays that role and directs it to the correct lobe for uh, perception. So, how this actually works then? So, bipolar ganglion cells. All right, this is where people get lost. All right, so far, it's just been pretty much like labeling things. So, again, this is a zoomed in version of the retinal wall. These are the things that actually see the color or, or peripheral vision or grayscale. The information is sent to the bipolar to the ganglion, and the ganglion, uh, of course, is attached to and composed of this optic nerve, thalamus brain. That's not that hard. Here's what is hard for people, though. The process by which you see is really what, I, what you would call abstract. It, it's kind of hard to understand because you're not actually seeing the light because, uh, how can I phrase this? Can you see with your skin? No. no. Is there light still hitting my skin, though? Yes. Why can't I see through it, though? Yeah, you're right. It doesn't have this process. Uh, these are what actually cause me to see. If light hits me and these aren't working or I don't have them, I don't see anything. That's why you can shine light on different parts of your body and what do you know? You don't see anything. You only see things because of these receptors. All right, this is where the perception thing gets really abstract and weird to people. Uh, and this is why it's hard to comprehend what things actually look like because this is just my brain telling me what it looks like. I'm not looking directly at you. My brain is taking in light, and then my uh, cones and rods are sending information, and my brain's interpreting it. So I have no idea what you actually look like. I only know what I can actually see. So here's how it works. Light comes in, right? Goes in, it's focused, whether it's hitting um, the outer parts of the retina wall or it's hitting the fovea, the same thing occurs. These rods and cones are only activated by a certain frequency of light. Why do I care about frequency with light waves? Why does that matter? Here's what I mean by that, by the way. Frequency, in case you guys didn't know. I can get rid of this part. You guys understand this part, right? I can, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Frequency is uh, basically how many waves there are in a tiny little uh, segment. So, for example, uh, light isn't just like a beam. It's actually waves. And you can actually measure the distance between the waves. So I'll, I'll give you like three examples here. Here's one light wave. It's like this. So here's the space that I'm using to look at them. So it's going to be the exact same space. Here's one light wave. Here's another light wave. And here's another light wave. Uh, which one's the highest frequency? The one on the bottom has the highest frequency. What I mean by that, I know I actually put it on the bottom, and it's kind of like, hey, that's not higher up, but high frequency means you have more waves in a given uh, unit. So in this case, like, you could say, oh, it's got more peaks and valleys. That means it has a higher frequency. Higher frequency equals more waves uh, in any given segment of measurement. So this one then has what? Highest, lowest, middle? Low. Why is it the lowest frequency? Yeah, it has less peaks and valleys, so lowest frequency. Uh, and this one's obviously, at least between these three, I've uh, got the middle frequency. Well, who cares? It's still light. Why does the frequency matter? I feel like you guys know this, but you either don't remember it or you're afraid to say it. Okay, so how do I know uh, what red, what's the difference between red light and blue light? Is the color actually different? It's not. What's different? The frequency is different. All right, so in the case of higher frequency, you're talking more blue. In the case of middle frequencies, you're talking more greenish yellow. And low frequencies, you're talking what? Red. You got a question? Or? No, I'm saying, um, is it like, is it, is it higher frequency because there's like more of it or like essentially better because it's like more for your brain and more for your rods and cones to process? 
Oh, no, um, I see what you're getting at. So no, technically it's higher energy because it has more waves, but that doesn't really matter as far as processing because we process both of the, all these waves the same way. And here, here's the part that's really hard for me to, to take from my understanding and get across to you guys because I can't think of how to word it very well. Um, when you see different colors, so in this case we're using uh, red and green and blue, the actual light waves don't look that color. We don't even know if they have a color. But the only reason you see what you know is red and what you know is green, what you know is blue, is because that's what your rod, sorry, your cone, is telling you looks like. So is the actual light the way I understand blue? Like, the, well, I'm using a blue marker. Like, this is blue, right? There's a different hue to that. We all recognize it. Even if you happen to see a different version of blue, we all recognize, if you're not colorblind, this is blue. But it doesn't mean that the actual light waves look that way. That's my perception of them. And the reason why I, I see that is the only cones that activate on this frequency are my blue cones. And I don't mean, by the way, they're colored blue. I mean, they're only activated by blue light. So if there's a red light wave coming in with low frequency, is that blue cone going to be activated? No, it's not. What's going to be activated? The ones that can analyze red. Yeah, exactly. So this is, by the way, called trichromatic tri theory, three color. Uh, you can only really see three colors, and that's red, and then a kind of greenish, and then a blue. And when you see different colors, like orange, for example, it's actually a combination of um, uh, these two combining to, to show you uh, orange, essentially. And when you're seeing a color, again, we don't even know if the actual light looks different. All we know is the frequency is different. So only certain cones are activated depending on the frequency that hits it. And that's telling your brain that that's blue and that's what blue looks like. That's the perception element. So if, I, if someone shines a blue light at me, the rays that are coming in have this wavelength roughly. So that only activates my uh, blue cones, ones that take in uh, these wa light waves, and then they send an electrochemical signal through my bipolar and ganglion, and it goes to my brain. All right, that's why you can't see with other parts of your body. I know this is a really weird phrase, but I used to think that when I was a kid. I was like, how come I can't see with my hands? Like, I would actually think that, like, why can I only see through the eye? Like, what does it mean to be like if I was born without eyes like what would I what would I see because I can't like I don't see black through my elbow like if you close your eyes it gets dark and black right but if you like I mean I'm, I'm not if I had no eyes would I would that even happen like or would it just be nothing and what would that nothing be like I thought that as a kid and then when I when I found out about this however many years ago it was, I was like oh that's why um that's how color works and that's why it's so hard to comprehend like not having eyes because not the same as closing your eyes, it would just be nothing. And I don't exactly know what that would be like. And I don't ever want to find out, by the way, what that would be like. I like my eyes. I prefer to keep them all in my crease and just keep on. So anyways, <clears throat> again, we don't actually know if these colors look that way uh, because this is just how our brain tells us it looks. Um, and we're not even actually seeing the light. The light's coming in and it activates a certain cone, whether it's red or green or blue. And then it sends the signal electrochemically, so it's not even the same signal that came in, uh, to my brain, which says, that's what blue looks like, that's what you're seeing. Or that's what red looks like, that's what you're seeing. Or that's what green looks like, or orange, or whatever color it might be, and that's what you're seeing. So you're not actually seeing the object itself. The light's coming in, it's activating a, a rod or a cone in your uh, retina, and then it's sending an electrochemical signal, which is a totally different form of energy. All right, so I've got light energy coming in, then it activates a cone, and then it sends the signal electrochemically to my brain. So am I actually seeing the color? Who knows? That's just my brain is telling me that I'm seeing. We know that it works because, like, we know I actually see that desk there. It's not, like, illusionary as far as I know because if I walk up to it and I hit it, it's like, ow, yep, that, that table's there all right. So we know the vision we have works, but um, does it actually look that way? The color, I have no idea, uh, because that's just how my brain um, perceives blue or red or green. 
Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm sure that made it probably more confusing to some of you, but um, that's actually how it works. You don't actually see the color. It just activates a certain uh, cone in your uh, retina, and it sends the signal for red or for blue or for green. Uh, and then um, depending on how many rays there are that are red or blue, it's going to blend them and make them look purple or, or however it, uh, it works in your brain. And that's how you actually see these colors. So do we have a rough understanding of how you're seeing light? Somebody tell me how I'm seeing light. It's hard, guys. Like, I'm not joking. This is probably the hardest sensory thing that there is, is understanding how you actually see light. So the, the actual, like, waves, or, like, the actual, like, waves aren't the color that you, like, so if you, if it's, like, red, it, the wave isn't red. It's mm -hmm. how your cone perceives it to be, essentially. So, like, if, like, a, if a red a light wave hits your cone, the, the ones that see red go off and then they send the signal to your brain saying, oh, this is the color red. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh -huh. And so um, if there's a lack of those colors, none of those cones activate. It's like if I shine a green light at you and there's no red in it. Um, the red cones just don't do anything. The light comes in, but it's green, so it doesn't activate, right? It's just like the example I always give with like the little kids have the, the shape blocks and you can't shove a square into a, to a star. It's just like that with the cones. They only turn on when they see, receive uh, the correct wavelength, all right? And then when that was received, it goes, oh, there's blue. And then it tells your brain that there is blue, all right? So that's how it actually works. So you can actually experience color blindness if for whatever reason, uh, either your brain can't perceive or your cones for a particular color aren't working. So let's say, for example, I, uh, um, I was born and for whatever reason, that in my DNA, the cones for red were uh, created improperly, and I, my, my red cones aren't working. How's the world going to look to me? Not red. Will I see color? Green. Am I just going to see black and white? What am I going to see? You'll, you'll see like, other colors except for red. Yeah, and then any color that red's in, I won't see that the same way other people do. No. All right, so here, here's an example, actually. Um, uh, how can I phrase this one? Okay, so I had, did I tell you about my, uh, uh, my colorblind soccer player from four years ago yet? No, sir. Okay, he didn't tell me he was colorblind. I found out. Because we had these soccer balls that were uh, um, orange. They had a certain pattern. Uh, and most of the little, um, are they hexagons or pentagons? I don't even know if they're four. I don't even know if they're six or five sided. Whatever they are. They're little, they're hexagons? Okay. So they're hexagons, if they're six sided. I don't know if they are or not, but... So these little hexagons all throughout, and most of them are orange, and a few of them are like this black color. So it's, it's something like this, roughly. So this is the soccer ball. There was, I wanna say the black ones were pentagons, and then the others were hexagons. Maybe I'm wrong. But most of the uh, soccer ball itself was uh, these ones. Oops, I got two there. Was uh, this one, so they're, they're orange, right? And then these are black. And you can tell, obviously, because they're orange. The other team had the exact same design, the exact same thing. It was black on the pentagon part, and the little hexagons were uh, a very light shade of green. And so we, we do it through our practice, our warm-ups, and we get ready for the game, and I have him collect the soccer balls and put them in the bag. And he's like, hey, coach, we forgot one. And I looked over. He said, we got the orange ones. And he's like, we forgot one. And he pointed, and there was a green one. And I was like, you're colorblind, aren't you? He's like. Yeah, how'd you know? I was like, because that's green and those are orange. So the reason why he couldn't tell the difference was, um, I'm not sure which one he lacked, but he lacked either a green, a properly functioning green or properly functioning red cones, so he couldn't see the shade difference. He saw, let's say his red cone wasn't working, for example, all he saw was the uh, green for both of them. Or if his green one wasn't working, all he saw was whatever uh, red there was and wasn't in there. I guess he'd actually have to be green because if it was red, he wouldn't see the other one. So anyways, uh, that's all that means if you're colorblind. One of or two of those raw, uh, cone types are not functioning properly. Whether the cones themselves are damaged or you're just not perceiving it, I'm not sure. Uh, but that's, that's essentially what it is. So I get it. This is really abstract and weird, but that's how you actually see. You're not actually seeing the color. It, it probably doesn't look how you're seeing it. But those light waves, depending on their wavelength, activate certain cones, and those are the ones that send the signal for this is blue, and this is what blue looks like, or this is red, and this is what red looks like. That's how it actually works. 
and the shades, um, <clears throat> to like their degree of lightness and darkness, that's largely uh, picked up by the rods. Um, but that's more peripheral vision. So this process, where I take in light energy, goes in back here, activates a rod or a cone or whatever. Oops, I'm all those rods. Not bad. Um, uh, whether I activate a cone or a rod, the light wave comes in, it goes, oh, there's blue, or oh, there's uh, red, or you know, whatever uh, cone or rod I've activated. And then it activates and sends the electrochemical signal to the bipolar cell, which tells the ganglion, which sends that right back on up to the optic nerve, the thalamus, and to your occipital lobe, where your brain goes red or blue, whatever signal it sent, and it sees that there. All right, that's called transduction. And uh, that's a big term that they really care about for some reason, I don't know why, but they really care about it. And that just means I have one form of energy coming in. What kind of energy is this, by the way? Light energy, yes. But does my brain get the light energy? Does it ever see the light waves? Do they ever touch the brain? No, no unless like, like miss, missing my skull or something. Um, so yeah, as long as you're fully healthy and normal, your brain is not seeing these light waves at all. What's my brain getting? What signal? So we go from light, activates a rod or a cone, to what? How does it communicate? How do my neurons communicate? Electrochemical, right, neurotransmitters, electrochemical. This process of going from one form of energy to another, that's called transduction. Uh, trans means across, duction means, does it mean transform? I can't remember. Or just make, make, yeah, I think that's what it means. Regardless, transduction means uh, it, it changes from one form of energy to another. All right, because again, you're not actually seeing the light waves. It's just activating cones or rods that send an electrochemical signal saying you're seeing them. And also provides you with the imagery for that. All right, so am I actually seeing you? Am I looking right at you guys? I am looking at you, but am I seeing you? Is my brain getting the light waves from you? No, what's my brain getting? The electrochemical signals, right. How do I see red? The red light waves are coming in. They're activating the, which ones? The ones that, that can see red, right? And then that red cone is doing what? It activates and sends the signal goes through my optic nerve, my thalamus, to my oxygen lobe, goes, there's red. In that case, you're wearing red. My phone is red, so that's how I would know that. What about blue? Same. Exact same process. Here comes in my blue light wave? No. No? Go down. What's the difference between this and this? Frequency. The frequency, right, okay. So there's my blue, comes in, hits my cones that are activated by blue. Can they be activated by red or green? No, they can't, just the blue. Activates, sends the electrochemical signal, goes to my brain, then I see the blue. You guys got that? All right, uh, rod the same way, but they're less complicated because there's no color difference. It's just um, lightness or darkness in a presence of it or not. The only other thing I have to say about vision, I think, yeah, before we take our break, is uh, this is trichromatic theory that um, you're seeing different combinations of red, greenish, and bluish. There's another one, though, called opponent process theory which is also true somehow at the same time. So not only does the signal for red send the signal for red, so let's say this is red, red. But, let's say there's a cone next to it for blue, blue. Uh, not only does, like let's say the red light comes in, not only does it send the signal uh, for red to my brain, red, but it also, since they're attached to bipolar cells, blocks off the blue signal rather than just sending the red. Anybody know how you could possibly know this? There is a way to know this. It's actually an optical illusion, by the way. It's like um, if you stare at something for a while and then you look at like a white surface and you see it. Yes, it's a different color. <clears throat> so if I were to stare at a red piece of paper. I just put it right in front of my face and I just stared at it. And there's enough you know, light on it so it's not dark, I can see it. Light, or sorry, uh, red, I'm looking, and then I look at a blank white board. What am I gonna see? I don't see red, actually. 
you actually see the opposite of red, uh, which in this case is going to be uh, green or blue, depending on the hue of it. Yeah, you see the opposite color because it has temporarily, while you were seeing it, disabled this cone, and then when it reactivates, you for some reason can get at least a, a, an image, a momentary image of that color. So they have these pretty cool like uh, optical illusions in subtextbooks where like it's like look at this flag, and it's like um, what color could it be? It'd be like uh, red. I can't remember the color they do, but it's like green, black, and yellow or something like that, and you stare at it for a long time, and then they have you look at a white box, and you see the French flag where it's blue, white, and um, uh, yellow. Because for that brief moment, it has blocked the other receptors, and then when you look away, it allows them, and you, and you see it, even though it's not there. Um, and you guys can test that out. You can do that any color. If you stare at one color and look at a white surface, you'll see whatever the opposite version of that color is momentarily and then it'll fade. We've all experienced that before. I mean, if, uh, if you look directly to light and you look away, I mean, is your vision totally clear? What do you see? Yeah, you see a dark spot, right? Because it's, it's the opposite of the, uh, it's rods in this case, uh, but it's the opposite uh, of that color. Uh, it's the opposite of the white, bright, or yellowish light would be a darker hue. That's why if you look at the sun, which you should never do because it can damage your eyes, if you ever looked at the sun on accident or whatever and you look away, it's gonna be like a little blob in front of your eye for a while and then it gradually goes away uh, because of this, this uh, opponent process theory. So not only do I see different combinations of three, but they actually can block each other, which is why when I look away from something, I actually momentarily see the opposite color uh, if I've been staring at it, all right? So we good on the vision portion? All right, that's the most complex of all these senses, I think. So if you even have a rough understanding of this, you're good. Um, if you understand all the all the, the, the parts, you're in good shape. Um, and as long as you understand what transduction is, you should be okay. Um, I don't know if you need to know the super abstract thing about you're not actually seeing light, you're seeing electrochemical signals activated by the light. But um, I, I want to at least tell you about it because that's how it works. You guys got it? Okay, have fun looking at each other but knowing you're not actually looking at each other. <laughs>